Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can parse nested JSON in Swift 4. So the first question is to find out, well, nested JSON. And JSON Placeholder is a really good website which consists of a lot of fake JSON, dummy JSON that you can use to, to parse. So you can see that there is posts, comments, albums, photos, to-dos, and users. Let's check out users. And this definitely is looking like pretty good nested JSON. You have an array, and then you obviously have a, some sort of a dictionary with key, value, key, value, key, value. And address itself is also a dictionary, it's nested, which consists of street, suite, city, zip code, and then you have geolocation, which is latitude and longitude. So the question is, how can we parse something like this in Swift language? So let's go back. First, copy this URL, obviously. And let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we obviously need is the URL. So let's go ahead and create the URL. And I'm going to go ahead and pass in the URL. All right, so now that we have the URL, all we need to do is to use a URL session, which is a built-in class, shared dot and one of these overload for data tasks. I'm gonna use this one because I do want to get the data back. At this point, you might be wondering, hold on a second, we are doing JSON parsing, where are the structure, where are the classes, where is the decodable and all that stuff? Wait for it, I just want to see, can I even get the data or not? Step by step, right? All right, so I'm gonna pass in the URL and I'm gonna get data, response and error, okay. This time I'm only focusing on data, so I'm not gonna pass in anything over here and here. Error, make sure that you do pass an error and check for the error. I'm not gonna pass in anything over here because we are only focusing on getting the data right now. Now let's go ahead and unwrap this data and then go ahead and print it out. So let's see if we can get the data in our case, all right? Okay, so we got some data back, uh, 5645 bytes, so 5,645 bytes. So it looks like we are getting some sort of a data back. All right, so now the question is, how should we map? Well, let's, let's get started with creating our structure. So structure and structure to map what? So let's go ahead and look at our example. We are uh, basically mapping user. So let's call our structure user user, great. Okay, what properties will it have? Well, what properties do we have over here? ID, name, username, and email. You don't really have to get all the properties or map all the properties. You, will, you can map only the properties that you need. So let's say that I need name and email only. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create name and email only, all right? Now, if I go over here and try to map a user, it's actually not user, it's a list of user or an array of user, you can actually see over here, right? So now if I go over here and I try to map it, so using the data, if I say JSON decoder dot decode, and you can see it's not really appearing over here. So whenever you are inside that asynchronous block in, uh, your playground apparently, it doesn't really work. But what you can do is you can try to make it work over here outside of it, and then you can see the IntelliSense popping up. So we're gonna say that go ahead and map an array of user, and we will pass in the data, and we will copy this and paste it right here. For this to decode user, the user should be marked as Codable. Actually, it has to be marked with decodable because we are only decoding, but I'm just going to say codable because what if we want to encode it also? All right, so we're going to call it with a try, a safe try, and we will get hopefully an array of users back. And once we do get that back, we're going to go ahead and print it out. All right, let's go ahead and run this again. And you can see that we are getting it back. So that's great. We got the name back. If you can read carefully, you get the name back and you got the email back. 
We didn't really get any address back and the reason we didn't get any address is because, well, we didn't really map address. So how would we map a nested array or a nested dictionary or a nested structure if you're looking at from the side of Swift? So let's first go ahead and create our address. Address, which is also, I'm gonna mark it as codable. And now we are thinking about, okay, what fields do we need in address? So in address, I need street, suite, city, and zip code. I'm gonna just select street and city, that's fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Street and city. Now, if I want to do it, if I want to encode or get address also, I have to use the same exact key that you're passing, that the JSON is returning me, which in this case is address and perfectly fine. I mean, you can overwrite keys, don't get me wrong. We will see, we will experience that later on. But right now, address is a perfectly fine key and this key must belong in the parent or in the main class where you want to basically decode it, which is our address class, or sorry, user class. So let's go ahead and add address. This is very important that the key is same as address. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass in the address, all right? So now what's gonna happen is that when JSON is decoding, it's gonna see name and it's gonna decode it to string. It's gonna see email and it's gonna decode it to this guy over here, email. Then it's gonna see address. And it's gonna be like, okay, hold on, address is not really a string, it's an address, so it's gonna move over here and then start decoding all the JSON values to street and city, all right? With that change, let's go ahead and run it again so that we can see the address also. And now you can see over here that we have the name, we have the email, and we have the address also. You can see it. And I can also print out the address. So let's go ahead and say users of zero dot address dot street all right so let's go ahead and print it out and you will see that it hopefully will print out uh, one particular address okay so this is like encoding and all that stuff that's fine uh, so if you go ahead and print it out it's right over here at the bottom cool ass light and uh, it prints out the address so this is how you will map nested hierarchy in in basically uh, swift 4. now let's take it one more step further address has something called geo, which has latitude and longitude, all right? So we need a class or a structure that represents geolocation. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure. A structure name can be anything. And I will say this is codable. And now I have to match the exact same property names. So latitude and longitude, lat and long. Lat and long. I don't really like these names, lat and long. I want to say latitude and longitude. If I say latitude and longitude over here, which is latitude, and make sure that they are string, so the string over here. So if I say latitude and longitude over here and longitude, it's not going to be able to map it. And the reason it's not going to be able to map it because the name of the keys in JSON is lat and LNG, which is not latitude and longitude. So we need to do some sort of a custom mapping. And so it kind of makes it easy because you can simply say private enum, it doesn't have to be private, but private is good, coding keys, and it will be inheriting from string and it will use coding key. And over here you can say that by the way, latitude that I have, it will be represented by lat in JSON and longitude, which is a key, will be represented by, I believe it is LNG, let me make sure. So LAT, LNG. So now we are saying that, hey, JSON uh, decoder, if you find LAT, just map it to latitude. If you find LNG, just map it to longitude, all right? So these are the kind of custom uh, coding keys that you can provide if you obviously don't want to name it exactly like the JSON is returning, which is pretty common. I mean, you might see some weird stuff being returned from JSON, which you don't want to create properties like with capital letters or with underscores. So you can use this technique.
Okay, so geo, if you look at over here, it's part of address. So we can actually go over here and we can create a geo and which will be of type geo. I can even change this. If you don't like geo over here, I can actually change that. Guess how I can change it? By providing coding keys. All right, you don't like geo? Let's go ahead and change it. Let's go ahead and create a different property name. Private enum coding keys, which is of type string and coding key. So the first question is, what do you want to call it if you don't want to call it geo? Let's call it geo location. All right, maybe capital L or something if you want. And let's go ahead and say that, hey, if you find geolocation, it's basically map out to geo in JSON. All right. Let's go ahead and build this and try to run this right here. Oops. So now we have issue because it's saying decodable because street does not have matching coding key. All right, so this is a problem, right? Whatever, whenever you get a coding key, whenever you're defining your own coding keys, uh, you have to define all of them. So I don't really want to change street, so I'm just gonna say case street, and that is perfectly fine. Case city, that is perfectly fine. But you have to include those things. Let's go ahead and run it again. And we'll wait, hopefully we'll get back something sometime. Still doing something, there we go. It's kind of hard to read, but you can actually see. Let's take the first one. Uh, I think it's still here. Okay, so we got the name, we got the email, we got the address which contains the st uh, street and the city. And look at that, geolocation, which is latitude and longitude. Perfect, right? So this way, using coding keys, uh, we were able to dictate that even though the key name or the property name in JSON is different than the property name in our structure, we will still be able to map those together if we use coding keys. And you also learned that how you can do a map nested hierarchy of uh, JSON by creating nested structures, all right? And that's uh, pretty much it, thank you so much. And hey, if you really like this video and if you want me to continue creating Azam Sharp Weekly, uh, videos and if you want to support me or even go then go ahead and buy my course it's called the complete guide to json parsing using swift 4 and it is a around two and a half to three hour course and it goes through a lot of different things like a lot it will tell you how to flat the flat out the model it will do a lot so everything you want to learn about uh, json uh, decoding or the new json parsing in swift 4 you can check out this course and you can see it's already has like more than 4,000 people and uh, pretty good ratings also, all right? So there's a link in the description, just click on the link and you will get an amazing price. And there's also a link to all of my courses on Udemy. So if you like my courses, you might be interested in buying other, other courses. So thank you so much again for supporting Azam Sharp Weekly and I will see you next week.